Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show you a couple of teams you can use for this faction assault in Fangmore. Now, importantly, on this one, there are a couple of things you want to grab from the shop. Make sure you grab at least to tier 3 if you can, because there's a new troop there. It's Satori Mage, inflicts fairy fire on an enemy, then deals magic based damage to them, boosted by bleeding enemies. Now, the fact it does the fairy fire first, then deals the damage, means you're going to get actually a 50% boost on whatever damage it says you're going to deal to them. So that is actually a fairly good troop. I quite like that. Gains 5 magic when attacking delves. Allied Naga gain 2 life and inflict bleed when doing skull damage are the traits. So let's buy up to tier 3. Let's do it now. Get the potion of enchantment in the first tier. Always worth having. All your troops start enchanted at the start of each and every battle. For the entirety of this event. Potion of Explosion normally spoils a really good start on a game half the time, but um, you've got to take the rough with the smooth with these things. The Potion of Rejuvenation is part of your rewards for this third tier, and you get extra faction assault sigils, chaos shards, and more. Next stage there is a weapon, I've already got it, Bloodthirsty Axe. Deals damage to the first two enemies and inflicts a bleed on them. It's, yeah, nothing fantastic. Right, to the fights itself, I've done the first one to lock the team in. You have to do a minimum of five fights, all the way around this dragon-shaped thing to the end there. You can, if you like, pick off these extra rooms on its legs kind of thing to uh, increase the room treasure multiplier. That is up to you. For the sake of the video and speed, I am just going to go straight ahead towards the head. Har har. Right, anyways, the actual team itself. So two different teams you can use for this and a variation of this one and how you can change it around a little bit. Oh, I've got to do this first, haven't I? Because I've locked the team in. Right, I'll just do these quickly first. A really easy team to use. Queen Beatrix, we know about Queen Beatrix. She... creates nine green end round, deals 126, in my case, true scatter damage that is boosted by various medals in your player level, things like that. And there are independent 40% chances to gain an extra turn and half her mana back. And she has that superb royal honey that cleanses all allies when matching four or more gems. King Selenus is here because he gives all the wild folk allies a 50% start in mana. He can chip in with damage if we like, but we're not really going to use him or need him. He's just there for that 50% mana start. And a weapon. A tooth of the wild explodes a load of green gems grants a random status effect to all the wild folk allies which is the entire team and has a summon so it is really cool on the later levels or if you're a newer player you can switch around the uh, weapon and king slenis in first and last slots because you then can take advantage of the fact you have a summon if you uh i feel like your top your top troop is in a bit of danger it doesn't matter if you lose king selenus because you'll get a summon when you cast this anyway, so it can work in your benefit. But most of the time for this, we're just going to be charging up Queen Beatrix and casting her because we get a 50% start in mana and we're enchanted. This is going to happen really quickly. Both your Queen Bees are going to get to cast really quick. So they're not going to take long at all, especially with that potion of explosion. It's just ready straight away. Ludicrously fast. Ludicrous speed. <laughs> Just reminded me of a classic old film, Spaceballs. So funny. Rick Moranis, uh, behind Dark Helmet, a spin off of, um, of Darth Vader. <laughs> uh, such a funny film, though. Don't need to cast this, but I will. I forget the scene, but they're trying to catch somebody up. Or they have to outrun someone or something in their spaceship. And they said we've got to switch to light speed, which, as most people know, is theoretically the fastest speed anybody can possibly travel at. And he said, no, it's too slow. We need to go to ludicrous speed <laughs> or something like that. It was so funny. Classic film. A parody of many different science fiction films and absolutely superb. All right, let's uh, get this last one out of the way and then I'll show a couple of alternatives where you can change this team around and, yeah. As you can see, it's silly, silly fast. Ludicrous speed. 
And then in that film, they're going ludic ludicrous speed and their faces are being stretched and they're all being distorted and stuff. <laughs> and um, it's all going a bit wrong. And they have to stop and he shouts out, stop this thing. And the, the pilot or the captain says, like, we can stop. It's too dangerous. We have to slow down first. Oh, I'm getting carried away now with talking about space balls. But it's a really funny, really funny scene. Really funny film. You've got to watch it. If you've not seen it before, now I've got to stop talking about space balls. It is very, very funny. Right, anyway, let's show <laughs> a couple of um, ways you can change this. Right, so we've got two times Queen Bee, King Stellanus, and Tooth of the Wild. As I said, if you're a newer player or you just feel a bit, a bit vulnerable at the top, you can switch those two around. It's going to be a little bit slower collecting mana for your Tooth of the Wild because yellow is mana blocked by King Selenus, who you don't really want to cast. Um, but apart from that, it's going to be really good. If you lose your King Selenus on the higher levels th through skull damage, anything like that, then it doesn't matter because you've got a summon with this. And the cool thing about him being up top is he's impervious. So even if you started or got root trapped or anything like that, it's not going to actually affect him. You're still going to be able to deal skull damage to the opponent. So that's a good way to go with that. Other options for this. There was a second one which you might want to go for. Glaive of Many Goats. Again, pretty good for this. It deals damage to an enemy boosted by Wild Folk allies, then creates a mix of six green and yellow for each Wild Folk ally. So the green in this case would charge up Queen Bee, and the yellow would charge up King Selenus. But the reason I prefer the Tooth of the Wild is I don't really want to do normal damage to them, because we're doing true damage with Queen Beatrix, so it's kind of feels like it's wasted. Tooth of the Wild, for me, feels like the way to go. As a second team for this... What we could do is, let's just to show you an alternative team here quick. And let's go to Shield of Askaya. Does anybody know what's coming next as soon as I say Shield of Askaya? So with Shield of Askaya, we have two times. Tesla. And last not least, I actually like Drowned Sailor for this. And I'll tell you why. There he is. Right, um, pick a good class. Something like um, Geomancer would actually be pretty good for this because it's tanky, it keeps you safe. For this kind of thing. Uh, you can have something like Impact, inflict stun when enemies deal skull damage. Anti-magic sphere, reduce damage by 20%. Tactician, gain 3 magic at the start. You don't need mana source because you get a 50% start anyway. Rock solid, gain a barrier when matching a brown. Tree of knowledge, gain enchant when matching green. And fortitude, immune to stun, poison, disease, death mark, like at the end of hour. So really good traits in that. And all you'll be doing in this is getting that 50% um, start on your shield versus Skya. This gives an ally 58 armor. In my case, it'll be affected by your magic, boosted by all enemy attack, then enrage and barrier them. But Tesla deals true scatter damage, boosted by all ally and enemy armor. So you throw this on anybody in your team that's got low on armor. You can chuck it on yourself, throw it on Tesla and get a massive boost in, in that, and then it'll increase Tesla's damage and do a whopping amount of damage. And the reason why Drowned Sailor is here is because it converts yellow to blue. We don't use yellow, and Tesla does, and you can get a load of mana for her that way. And as well as that, it starts battles with full mana, so you can do that straight away. And there's a 20% chance, boosted by gems converted, to death mark the last two enemies. So on high-level delves, the last two enemies can get death marked and just die. Just like that. Right, so I'll just show this second team now in Fang more, just to show how this works. A slightly different pattern to the map on this one here, but the theory is exactly the same. This won't be quite as quick as the, the Queen Bee team. It's still a nice alternative and you can give yourself a really nice, a powerful boost. Like I say, you can look for this straight away if you like. You can look for a four match. But we don't need it. We want to get our shield up first. 
throw that on anybody that needs a bit of armor, but you can throw it on somebody else because they'll get a barrier at the same time, which is always nice. Cast this, bang, both Tedlers are up. Tons of damage, cast them back to back. Nice, comfy, easy win. That was level, what, 200? That was like a single cast of both Teslas. Stick on your medals that boost your armor for this. Medals of Guard. Which I haven't done, actually. So, yeah. Still, still got my Guild Wars medals running at the moment. Because whatever medals you've got running at the same time, if your defense is um, working for you, then it'll use whatever medal sets you've got going in the current arrangement. All right, so let's get some brown for there. Let's chuck that on someone. Give me a barrier at the same time. Let's get me Tesla up. By the time I've cast this, the second one will be nearly ready. So we'll dish them out a load of damage. Just do anything to get to the next round. Cast the second Tesla. Bingo bango. Next one. All right, again, essential we get our shield up to get that massive boost in armor. You can look out for the yellow to blue conversion if you like, but this team gets charged up so fast. It doesn't take long. Still wiping them out in one cast each of the Teslas. Of course, with a potion of enchantment, if you like, you can just go three Teslas if you got them. That would be a pretty cool way to go. Might even be better. Yellow to blue is not tons, but they're kind of all over the place, so we'll do that anyway. And we did indeed get that. We charged that up before the weapon got ready, so we need to... Wait for the weapon now. She's ready now. We cast this on itself because we lost our a barrier. But we still get their boost in armor. So we still get to do a lot of damage. Happy days. All right, let's do the last one. Oh, I say this is a level 200 delve and it's being done in a single cast. That will obviously vary on your magic level. Again, we've got a nice <coughs> mix of these here. We'll much well take that. It's not a four match, but it's going to still give us a big old bunch of mana, which we want. If you've got a barrier, cast the shield onto somebody else that hasn't got a barrier. Let's get that so we get our Tesla's ready one round quicker. Going to have to cast again. See, I didn't have to cast my drown sailor when i did so maybe if you've got three teslas that is actually a better way to go with this obviously every time you get brown you get the rock solid barrier anyway so that keeps us even more safe just give me my mana and be done with it game you know it's going to happen and kaboosh well, there you go. Two teams there you can use for this Fangmore faction assault. A lot of fun. Prefer the Queen Beatrix one overall. It's really fast, really fun. And very enjoyable to use. Got my Guild Wars to do later. I'll be uploading the video for that a little bit later on. But thanks for watching this one. Bash that like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.